I am here on the streets. Of course, uh, we are continuing the protests. And one thing I would want to say is that um, the young people, especially the Gen Zs, are not tired yet. Um, we've had so many other government-sponsored bloggers and goons trying to change the course of the conversation and trying to you know, delude people into believing that um, the government has won. And by President William Ruto, um, you know, giving people other positions or rather exchanging positions within the existing cabinet that he has answered our, our call. No, he has not. We're on the streets because we don't want uh, recycling of the cabinet secretaries who just, you know, who are just dismissed the other day. We want them to be done away with. We want them to be dismissed completely and the cabinet to, you know, we want a, a total cabinet reshuffle. At the same time, because we know the person that uh, William Ruto is, we know that these are not things he is willing and able to do. So that is why the ultimate call is that Ruto must go. That is what we still hold on to. And we are not going to relent until, until that is adhered to. We are not going to relent until our goal is achieved. Those are lame duck allegations. The president doesn't have anything to hold on to. So he's just trying to find, you know, any, anything that can make sense to the general public. That's why, you know, at first it was the former president Uhuru Kenyatta who was alleged to be behind these protests. Another time it was the opposition or part of the opposition. Sometimes it was Russia. At some point it was, you know, the media. At some point it was the, uh, the uh, Kenya civil society space. And now they are calling on um, the Ford Foundation. You see, these are people who do not actually have the facts. That tells you that the president is someone who does not know what is happening in Kenya. So he's just holding on to any information, any rumors that he gets to hear alongside, you know, beside the road. So I think these are misplaced allegations. Ford Foundation is not behind any protests. Ford Foundation has been at the forefront in supporting civil society organizations in Kenya and, and other countries. That is what they've continued to do. For over a hundred years now, I mean about a hundred years now, Ford has been doing that same work. So if someone is going to allege that Ford, has been, Ford Foundation has been supporting civil society organizations for almost a hundred years just to, you know, just to support protests, they are very misplaced. This is a Gen Z funded movement. No one is buying anyone anything. If at all, you understand the other day actually people were contributing towards the you know, hospital bills and other bills for those who were shot dead, those who are maimed that are, are in hospitals, and those who were abducted and came out you know, injured. All right? So this is a Gen Z sponsored movement. No one is sponsoring, no external force is sponsoring the movement except for the people themselves. But of course some people will go and say, this is Jacob Juma. You know when they say Jacob Juma, they don't mean it literally Jacob Juma. But they mean it is the actions, the previous actions of the president, of William Ruto, that are resulting to this revolt right now, that is re resulting to the protest that we have right now. Because he has, you know, he's known to be a person of lies and lies and lies. One thing I can say is not, they are not going to heed to the voice of the young people. If they were to heed to the, to the voice of the young people, they would have dismissed the cabinet and came back with totally new people. Today, we have Aden Duale, Soipan Tuya, and many other people back in parliament, I mean in, in cabinet. And, and they are just reshuffling. Today you've heard that uh, Aden Duale is no longer in defense cabinet, I mean in defense ministry. Now he's been taken to environment. Now Soipan Tuya has been taken to, you know, so he's just going to recycle these friends. There's this close, the, the, the close circle of William Ruto that we are going to see even as we proceed. So I think the call for change is landing on dead ears. And that is why our, our ultimate call is that Ruto must go. Because we know with him out of the office, then we are assured that someone who will come next will listen to us. And of course when I say with him, I don't just mean him as an individual. I mean him and his whole entire cabinet. I mean Ruto, Gashagwa and, and all that group of people. We want a totally new executive arm of government, a totally new cabinet and a totally new group of people that are going to help us forge uh, the agenda forward. You know the government um, got into very <laughs> funny tacts of abducting young people, maiming young people, especially those that they thought are probably leading a certain clique of people, those that were at the forefront. 
So, so many people have been abducted, myself included, and I thank God that I came out alive. A number of us didn't come out alive, were found dead, all right? Some of us were found very, in very critical uh, situations, conditions. So they're using these to, you know, to weaken the movement. But I can tell you for a fact, they are just making the movement strong. They are strengthening the movement further. Because you can see me as a person who probably experienced abduction and went two days without food or water or anything, I am back again on the streets. And I know there are so many other people like myself who are seeing no matter what it takes, no matter what they do to us, we are going to come back better, bigger, and stronger, all right, to further the agenda of the movement and to ensure that the ultimate goal is achieved. That is what we are doing. Otherwise, I want to tell the young people that if you see the government resorting to abductions, illegal um, arrests, killings, maiming, they are afraid. They are already giving up. And the only way they are going to probably show you that they're still strong is by speaking very hard stance, I mean, picking very hard stances and, 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 and talking very negatively of you. You are stronger than the government. That is why right now they are, they are, they, you know, they, they, they are sending police and, and, and every other, every other um, peacekeeping organization or other branch of the government to the streets to try and derail our activities. They will not derail our activities. Let us forge forward. Let us keep to the mission. Let us move ahead and continue with the movement. Do not be cowed. Do not be sell to fears because we have numbers. We are able, we are capable, and we are going to win over the government of William Ruto. On the, on the political class hijacking the movement, this is a thing. We, we have seen lately so many politicians are trying to align you know, their sentiments with the sentiments of the movement, the Gen Z movement. One thing is they've realized that without this movement, then no political party is going anywhere. So they have realized the strength that the movement has. That is why they're trying to align themselves with the, move, with the movement. I would say that we welcome any political party, any politician who has goodwill and who is ready to support the movement but we are not going to let them take over the movement. For those who are taking this for granted, I mean, those who are taking this as a to gain political mileage, I would tell them we are sorry, because that is not what we are, we are not going to welcome that. You come to our movement, you support the movement, you let us continue with the program as it were before, and of course, we shall entertain you there. But if you come that now you want to be the leader, no way, that is not going to happen.